All right, hello everyone. Um, we have been talking about budgeting and um, specifically kind of what is a budget, what are the components of it, why would we use a budget, and then uh, we also watched a video or I created a video on um, looking at a scenario uh, with um, just a young lady in high school trying to figure out where is her money going. She's saving, but um, or she's not saving. She's she's earning money, but she wasn't budgeting, and so her money was going to all kinds of uh, clothes and shoes and stuff that she wasn't really paying attention to. Um, one of the most important parts before you start putting together your own budget is having an understanding of your values and what are the things um, personally that you value, that you believe about money, about finances, um, about what can be done with it, because those those beliefs and those values um, can drive the way that you spend and the way that you budget. Um, so for every person, this is going to be a little bit different. You may you may interpret this uh, your own way um, in terms of what is money supposed to be used for, why is it important, or what what. And how can it be used um, personally for you is going to be different than it is for everyone else. So we're going to jump into this. Um, hopefully by the end of this, you're going to understand how your values greatly influence your financial behavior. And that you'll be able to identify some of those values. So why do we spend and save money? And sorry, this is... Uh, There we go. Gotta swipe back. So, why do we spend, save money? Um, take a moment right now and fill in an answer. Okay. Um, here are some things listed out. What do you value? So, um, and this isn't just in terms of money, these are just values in general. So, uh, doing things well, there's wealth, good grades, honesty, friendship, personal appearance. There's all kinds of things. So take a moment to look over this. Um, I'll give you just a little bit of time here. And then I'd like you to list three things that you value, um, either from this list or if you're thinking of something um, beyond this list, you can you can include that. But right now we're going to ask the question, what are three things that you value? Good. <clears throat> so what is a money personality? A money personality is a unique part of a person that guides their interaction with money. So it's um, shaped by maybe your your experiences, right? Um, whether that's family experiences or your friends, there's all kinds of things that influence it, but it's a unique part of a person that guides their interaction with money. And it's composed of personal value and beliefs about money. And it's influenced by attitudes, expectations, and emotions. Why is it important to know about money personalities? Well, understanding a money personality helps to identify money behaviors. Those behaviors can be classified as strengths or weaknesses to meeting goals. And money personalities and behaviors can be changed. But if we don't know what our money personality is, then we may not be able to identify strengths or weaknesses that we have in how we spend and how we save. So the idea behind this is instead of waiting until you're 40 to figure out why you don't have any money or why, you know, why you're so far in debt or why you're doing so well, if you can start identifying these things now at a younger age, then you can start putting practices in place to either strengthen 
um, areas of weakness or to lean into your areas of strength to help you meet goals. Um, so there's a money value survey that uh, would have been a handout in class. I guess we won't worry about that. Just the idea is that you are aware that there are different ways that you value money. And so your personality guides how you use money, the values, beliefs, attitudes, expectations, and emotions are part of your money personality. So if I value security, then it may influence me to save money instead of spend money so that I feel more secure. Maybe like the more money I have in my savings, the more secure I feel. Um, but I may also value spending time with friends. And so instead of saving it up, I value time with other people. And so I spend money on going out and spending time with people. And I don't really keep track of what I'm spending because what's more important is, is the connection that I have with other people. So there are different ways that your values or beliefs can shape the way that you use money. Um, one that we have to be really careful of, and I'm just going to talk, just kind of be real about it right now is, um, the culture that we live in. Um, a lot of it kind of gets us to believe that what we have on the outside is an indication of our worth on the inside. I'm going to say that again, like, our, our culture, especially like if you look at advertisements, they're selling us this idea that what we own, what we have, our materials, our material worth, our outside worth is directly related to our inner value. And that's a very dangerous road to walk down. Um, and so... You know, I just want to encourage you not to judge your inner value against other people's outward appearance and to not allow your outward appearance or outward wealth or materials or those things to define whether or not you have intrinsic value, whether or not you have internal value, because you are valuable um, just as a person. It doesn't matter what you have, what you don't have. But um, companies, business, advertisements, they're all trying to play that game of we can get people to buy our product if, it, if, it, if they can identify with it at a deeper level in a way that gives them value. And pay attention to commercials and stuff when you're watching and you'll see um, there's a lot of like, you know, not talking about products or spending buying things because they're useful, but buying them because they create some kind of value. Um, beer commercials especially, if you pay attention to those. Um, so anyways, your money personality can influence or has influence over how much you buy into those things. So here are some values and beliefs. Um, they're constructed from life experiences with money. And they have an intertwined and profound effect on financial behavior. And so um, if anyone is kind of like aware of the Great Depression, um, like my wife's grandma lived through the Great Depression and as a result saved a lot and didn't spend extra and really took, um, took care of like paying attention to everything that she owned and and uh, didn't waste anything because her experience with not having like like being in need caused caused a shift even when they when she had a lot later on in life she still wouldn't waste it um, so right here we have like a va if someone values security so scenario one someone values security they may believe that security can be achieved by saving money. And that influences the spending um, in sp saving money whenever possible. 
they may skip doing things in order to save money, but it, pr it creates security. Scenario two, respect. Um, a belief that may stem from like a, a value of respect is that respect can be bought by owning material possessions. And so um, spending money on expensive uh, clothes and cars and other status symbols in order to kind of generate respect through material um, possessions. And then the third scenario, happiness. So someone values happiness. Uh, they, they may believe that happiness will result from spending a lot of money. Um, so they may continually spend excessively in the pursuit of happiness. And um, in all of these scenarios, it's none of them are bad. They're just how we're wired because of our experiences. And so I just want you to kind of think through. And, and again, the purpose of today's lesson you're, is less like here's something tangible for you to learn and more about you you developing an awareness about yourself and maybe where you land on these values and to see patterns in how they they cause you to view money, to spend money, those kind of things, because that is going to influence your budget. Values are things that are very important and desirable to you. They influence how you spend your time, your energy, and your money. Um, people tend to be more satisfied with their money habits if they spend money based on their values. Beliefs. Beliefs are an idea that a person holds to be true about something. Beliefs about money may be based on facts or they may be based on assumptions. People who use money based on facts are more likely to be financially successful. And this is, again, kind of not very tangible today, but um, big ideas that we want you to grasp. Some examples of beliefs, beliefs that are not based on facts include uh, you have to be lucky to have a lot of money. That's not necessarily true. I mean, there are, obviously, I, I think that people that are born into situations, there is like, you're like, wow, you're really lucky that, you know, you're taken care of that way or that you were born into a family that has this, that, or the other. But um, it's also very possible to work and to save and to be uh, conscious in order to have a lot of money. Um, some other beliefs, lease, leasing is cheaper than buying, and we'll talk more about that later on, but essentially you pay to borrow something instead of paying to own something. Um, being rich will make you happy. That's another belief, and... Um, I think is it Daniel Tosh had a stand up stand up comedy and, and he said, I've never seen anyone frowning on a jet ski. Like money can't buy happiness, but it can buy a jet ski, and I've never seen anyone frown on a jet ski. Um but ultimately at the end of the day, being rich will make you happy is is a um is a belief that's not based on fact. Another one, all credit cards have simu similar annual fees and APRs. We'll talk more about what that looks like and what those things are in future lessons, but um, not the case. All right, money is safest hidden under a mattress. Uh, maybe another belief. And as you'll learn later on, we talk about kind of saving and some of those things. Um, you can use your money to make money, which is pretty crazy, um, but hiding it, kind of hanging on to it. I don't know if it's the safest place. And then the, the last one, a missed credit card payment here and there won't affect a credit record. And that's absolutely not true. Not only does it affect your credit record, but a lot of times um, whatever interest rate that you got that you signed up for on your credit card, if you miss a payment, um, there's a missed payment, like a different credit uh, um APR or interest rate that they then apply and will also apply to everything that you already paid to. It's crazy. So uh, we'll learn more about that later on. Um, so what are your values? We're going to take some time. Again, I had you list your top three 
uh, earlier on, so we're not going to worry about those, but um, this is already at the end of the slideshow and kind of all we have for you today, but um, in this last question, I do want you to think, does your spending behavior, so think about how you spend money right now, even if you don't make money, even if you like think about if you were to get some money for your birthday or um, some kind of holiday or or maybe you do make money, like how do you spend your money? What is your current spending behavior and does it reflect your values? And so um, I'm going to pose the question right now for you to answer. Does your spending behavior reflect your values and maybe if you can expand on that a little bit as much as you're comfortable um, maybe talking a little bit about what you actually spend money on so again the question is does your spending behavior reflect your values and we're going to talk more about this in future videos and kind of talk about um, building out a budget and how some of this stuff works and then we'll uh, we'll go from there okay hope you all are well and um